रामाय राम भद्राय रामचंद्राय वेद से रघुनाथाय नाथाय सीता पते नम अयोध्या कांड चैप्टर नंबर सेवेंटी फोर In the previous chapter we saw Bharata rebuking Kaiki in very harsh terms. Kaiki had to understand the ramifications of her actions. The most important consequence of that action was the fact that the citizens of Ayodhya were now deprived of the association of Lord Rama. And Bharata says that Kaiki failed in her dharma as a queen as a mother as a stepmother as a daughter as a daughter-in-law in every respect she has failed in her dharma and then bharata says that there is no way he is going to sit on the throne because he is always the servant of lord rama and he is going to bring rama from the forest and he is going to seat him on the throne we are going to explore this sentiment to a greater detail in this chapter verse 1 tam katha garha itva tu mataram bharata tada roshe na mahata avishtah punar eva abravit vachah bharata felt that he had but dealt lightly very lightly with the woman who called herself his mother the more he dwelt in imagination upon her unspeakable crime and its dreadful results furious indignation mastered him quiet and he pierced her heart with sharp words verse मैन count me as dead and wail and gnash your teeth as long as your sinful life retains its hold upon your body there is a precedent to sending away a cruel woman and so bharata is saying that even as my grandsire hunted your mother out of the country for her heartlessness and crimes you too get away from this kingdom and why is he counting himself as dead he is saying do you expect me to survive the death of my sire and the banishment of my brothers and all at your hands what is the foul sin that kaiki has perpetrated her foul sin was having compassed the death of her husbands and of her sons rama and lakshmana of sita and of the countless millions that inhabit the city because nobody can survive without rama so who is bharata supposed to rule verse 3 kimnute adushayad raja rama va brasha dharmikah यो मृत्युर्विवास चाते तुल्यम आगत माई सायर और राम हाउ डू दे क्रॉस ए पैथ कैन यू शो एन अदर सच डिवोटेड सर्वेंट ऑफ वर्च्यू एंड ड्यूटी एज माई ब्रदर राम what wrong or what injustice did you suffer at their hands that you should in one and the same moment slay one and banish the other it is interesting to note that bharata is asking kaiki the same questions that king dashratha asked her what mistake did he or rama ever do to her to deserve such a fate भ्रूण हत्या असी प्राप्त कुल से विनाशना कैकेयी नरक गच्चा मा च भारतुर्सा लोकता 
You have destroyed this fair line of Ikshivaku and have thereby burdened your soul with the sin of having murdered an embryo. The deepest and darkest hells call out to you to tenant them for all time, for not for you the bright worlds where your husband sits on his throne of glory. Verse 5 Yat vaya papam kritam ghore na karmana sarva loka priyam hitva mamapi apaditam bhayam my heart trembles in affright at the recollection of your hideous sin. For what devilish brain could ever conceive and encompass the murder of your lord and husband and the exile of Rama, the beloved of all beings? In the previous chapter, Bharata called Rama as Svarjana Priyam. Right now he is calling Rama as Sarva Loka Priyam. Because Every living entity in this world belongs to Lord Rama. Therefore, Rama is beloved by all living entities. Currently, we have forgotten our constitutional position, but once we remember it, we will automatically know that we are completely in love with Rama. Therefore, Rama is Sarva Loka Priyam. And Bharata also says that if Kaiki could behave so abominably towards Dasharatha and towards Rama, then how will she behave with him? This is very similar to what the ladies of King Dasharatha say as well in the previous chapters of Ayodhya Khand. That if Kaiki could behave like this to Dasharatha and Rama, how is she going to behave with them? Verse 6. Tvat krite me pita vrita rama cha aranyam ashritaha ayasho jiva loke cha tvaya aham pratipadita. It was your hand, I say, that plunged the dagger into the heart of my father. It was your hand that drove from this fair realm by lawful right there is my brothers and Sita. Boundless and eternal sway over the kingdom of infamy and disgrace is what you have secured for me, your glorious heritage. And right well have you crowned your efforts by bespeaking for me the miserable fate that awaits the foulest sinners. Once again, Bharata accuses Kaiki of killing Dashrata and exiling Rama. And over here, he also mentions that under the guise of doing something wonderful for Bharata, she in fact did something terrible to him. And that is put him in a world of infamy. So her actions did not benefit anybody. Verse 7. Matru rupe mama amitre nrusham se rajya kamuki Nate ham abhibhashyosmi durvrite pati ghatini. Fool possessed by the demon of ambition, are you not my most relentless foe that has taken my mother's form to work evil and misery upon me all the more easily? Famous beyond compare in the annals of sin, foul murderess of your fond devoted husband. Soil not my ears with your hated speech. Here he brings about another bad quality of Kaiki. That is Kama or desire. Bharata says Rajya Kamuke. That means desiring the kingdom. So how does he address his mother? Matra Rupe Mama Amitre. You are my enemy in the disguise of my mother. Therefore, we should understand that if a very close relative of ours is asking us to go away from Rama, then that person is a mitre or an enemy. The person who brings you closer to Rama is your best friend. 
the person who takes you away from Rama is your worst enemy. Therefore, Hanuman was truly the best friend of Sugriva because he brought Rama to Sugriva and asked Sugriva to surrender to Rama. Therefore, Hanuman was truly the best well-wisher of Sugriva. Similarly, anybody who brings us closer to the Lord is our best friend and people who want to take us away from the Lord is our enemy, even though they might be under the disguise of a very close friend. So, Matra Rupe Mama A Mitre Despite being my own mother, you are actually my enemy. Verse 8 Kaushalya cha sumitra cha yah cha anya mama mataraha Dukkena mahata avishtha tvam prapya kula dushinim Kaushalya, Sumitra and other royal ladies are drowned in grief all through your vile machinations. You have brought great disgrace to our family. We know that Dashratha had 350 wives and Kaushalya, Sumitra and Kaike were the most famous ones. And Bharata is lamenting the state of Kaushalya, Sumitra and the other women, the other wives of King Dashratha who have to live under the thumb of Kaikeyi. And Bharata reiterates his previous sentiment that Kaikeyi has brought great disgrace to the race of Ikshivaku as well as to the race of Kekeyas. Verse 9 and 10. Natvam Ashwapate Kanya Dharma Rajasya Dhimataha Rakshasi Tatrajata Si Kula Pradvam Sini Pitu Yatvaya Dharmiko Rama Nityam Satya Parayanaha Vanam Prasta Pita Dukhat Pitacha Tridivam Gata Bright fame and incomparable have you secured to the house that gave you birth, to the house that took you in. King Ashwapati is famed for his generous and noble instincts. Age and wisdom sit gracefully upon him. Hence, no reason could ever reconcile one to call you his daughter. It is nearer truth to say that some malignant demon has chosen this form to bring destruction upon this house. Hear me once again. You have buried in the depths of the dark forest Sri Ramachandra, the living embodiment of duty and truth. You have directed the grief engendered thereof to bring about the death of our Lord and King. Verse 11. Yet Pradhana si tat papam, mai pitra vinakrite, bhratra bhyam cha parityakte, sarva lokasya cha apriye. You have rendered me fatherless and brotherless at one stroke, and all people dislike me now. Previously, he called Rama as sarva lokapriya. And now he calls himself as Sarva Lokasya Apriya, the one who is despised universally, as opposed to Rama who is loved universally. Everyone knows that Bharata is extremely righteous and loves Rama, and yet he had to give multiple tests from Kaushalya, from Vashishta, from Bharadwaj Muni, from Guha. He had to undergo so many layers of tests to prove that he is indeed on Rama's side. And we will see that at a later stage. But Bharata calls himself as Sarva Lokasya Apriya to make Kaiki understand that her actions did not have a positive effect on him. Her actions had a very negative effect on Bharata. Verse 12 Kaushalyam dharma samyuktam viyuktan papa nishchaye kritva kam prapsyase tvadhyalokam niraya gamini 
O woman of evil desires moving towards hell, which world will you attain now after making Kaushalya, who is endowed with all righteousness, deprived of her son? What bright worlds on high do you hope to enter after having torn her only son from the arms of Kaushalya, whose heart knows no stain, and whose old age you have rendered helpless and unbearable? Annihilation, utter and certain, stares you in the face. My mind can grasp at no other milder fate that awaits you. Kimnava buddhya se krure niyatam bandhu samshrayam jeshtam pitra samam ramam kaushalyaya atma sambhavam. O cruel woman, do you not realize that Kaushalya's beloved son Rama, who is devoted to his relatives and is my eldest brother, is equal to a father? So Bharata is basically saying, Rama is the son of Kaushalya, your co-wife. But what blinded you to the fact that he is a source of life and light to his kith and kin? That he is entitled in every way to stand by the side of Dasharatha and that untold millions in this empire would quit their hold on life if he is taken away from them. It is utterly inconceivable that anyone could entertain the faintest shadow of a doubt upon this. Kaikeyi is addressed to as Krure, whereas Rama is Bandhu Samshrayam. Kaikeyi's cruelty caused great grief to her relatives, whereas Rama's actions and Rama's conduct is a source of perennial delight to his kith and kin. So this is a very beautiful comparison between the conduct of Rama and the conduct of Kaikeyi. And it's also interesting to note that when the entire world was against Kaikeyi, Rama continued to be on her side. So he is truly Bandhu Samshrayam, the refuge for his relatives, the source of great delight to everyone. Bharata also calls Rama, his eldest brother, as equal to his own father. So how can a righteous person like Bharata be anything but respectful to his older brother? Verse 14. Anga pratyanga ja putra hridayach chapi jayate tasmat priyatara matu priyatva natu bandavaha. A son is most beloved to his mother as he is born from the primary and secondary limbs of her body and also from her heart. The other relatives are only like friends. The Vedas tell us that the son is but the father born again. He springs from the father's heart where the jiva sits enthroned. That which passes from the father is but the energy, the essence of the face, neck, chest, stomach, hand, feet, eyes, nose, fingers and other parts of the body. A mother is drawn more towards the child born to her, the flesh of her flesh, than towards the mother that bore her, the brothers and sisters that came into the world with her, or the kin that claim with her the common tie of blood. Bharata is basically asking Kaiki, how did she expect Kaushalya to stand the shock of a lifelong separation from such a son? An example of how a mother feels for her son will be given in the next couple of verses.